Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Pentland Hills Gin. Me and my mate Panzer in Panzer's Pan. So, uh, this is our second video attempt. Uh, following on from all the great comments we received about how handsome Panzer was, uh, I've clearly been declared a man with a face for radio, but hey ho, that's the way it goes. Um, so, tonight we're creating a drink that uh, we framed and put together with friends called the Isla Martini. Now, first and foremost, I must say that all the details for making these cocktails can be found at... PennantHillsGin.com Thank you very much, loving assistant and darling wife. So tonight, relatively simple to make, but quite a complicated drink in just in terms of enjoying a martini. So I'm going to get straight into making the Isle of Martini. Now this, this martini was created in a kitchen in a little bungalow on the, Isle of Mart uh, on the island of, um, of Isla with me and my mate Ali. She and I were dancing by the end of drinking it all. So let's hope the same can happen to you because a little bit of dancing brings happiness in difficult times. So first things first, how to make your Isla Martini. Right, just find yourself any good old um, quality uh, mixing, mixing jar. Big, big point, keep everything cold. Shove it in the freezer or the fridge if you can before you start making your martini. Right, a little bit of vermouth. Uh, vermouth, wherever you can find it, um, there is some law about vermouth. Uh, Winston Churchill refused to have vermouth in his uh, martini. Uh, Ernest Hemingway would suggest that you just wave the vermouth at the martini glass and then let it slide past. But I do like a bit of martini, a bit of vermouth rather, in my martini. So uh, there's the measure of vermouth, and there's a big glug of gin goes into this, folks. In it goes. Whoopty, whoopty, whoopty. Um, clearly, I like using my gin. Why not? On top of that, we chuck in. A bit of ice. Uh, we've been isolated now on our little hilltop for uh, for about four weeks. Um, we're still talking and still coping. Uh, what we are doing is getting in an awful lot of dog walking, it has to be said. And it would be fair to say the dogs are all slightly confused as to how much dog walking you can get in in one day. Now, the martini. Shaken, not stirred, Miss Moneypenny. Uh, and that's exactly how your martini should be delivered. Um, now, if you've ever watched Spectre, you'll see the perfect martini being made by the bar lady uh, in, in, the, in the bar in the wonderful city of... Macau. There we go. Right, so, shaking your martini in the folly, if you like it, this ladies. Here we go. Shaking your martini. There we go. So just like that. Right. Ooh, lovely. So, I like to serve my martini really, really simple. Into the chilled glass. Goes my martini. Oh. And then what I like is we use just the zest of a lemon and not the complete rind. I love just the oiliness you get uh, from the lemon as you drizzle it into the martini glass. So there you go. Easy to make. One has to be slightly careful. There is a lot of booze in this drink. And on first contact, it can be quite surprising. Uh, but you'll be really, really impressed as to how mellow it becomes over time. I'd recommend one, two, pretty good, three, always gets a bit tricky. So from all of us here at Pantley Hills Gin, from Panzer, who once again has remained asleep during my entire presentation, maybe wish you and your friends all the best, and please be safe. Cheers. <laughs> 